Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. On September the 15th, the Drone Pilot Association of Canada's Steering Committee met with Transport Canada to discuss how to improve the Canadian RPAS pilot exams. Let's see how it went. The Drone Pilot Association of Canada, or DPAC, represents recreational and light commercial drone operators by promoting safety and a reasonable regulatory environment in Canada. There's a link in the description below this video to our beautiful new website where you can learn more about us and join the organization. It's totally free. The meeting on September the 15th was our second quarterly meeting with Transport Canada and went extremely well. Our representatives were Steve Bannister, Steve Bogner, Mike Hill, Nick Seemel, and myself. Transport Canada was represented by Jeremy Fountain of the RPAS Task Force. The focus of the meeting was a DPAC proposal to improve the Canadian RPAS pilot exams. I'll walk you through that presentation and the discussion that took place afterwards. We started with noting good things about the current exams. They're online as opposed to an in-person exam center. The results are available immediately. They are open book. It's easy to retake the exam, and it's good that each exam experience is different due to randomized questions. Unfortunately, there are also three serious flaws with the exams that should be addressed. First, and well known to anyone who has taken either of the exams, far too many of the knowledge requirements are unrelated to safe small RPAS operations. Instead, they're based upon manned aircraft requirements and as such require an extremely broad range of study or really fast Googling. Secondly, there are actually some fundamental drone safety elements missing from the exam knowledge requirements. One example is how to use apps to identify the nature of the airspace you intend to operate in. Finally, feedback. The exams do not provide sufficient specific feedback to ensure you actually learn from the experience. If you pass the exam, you might never go back to discover what you didn't get right. These flaws lead to four types of responses, in addition to the usual frustration at the exams. The worst impact is non-compliance. There are many drone pilots out there who don't bother to take the exams because they perceive the exams as excessive or simply unrelated to drone safety. Avoidance. More and more drone pilots are flying sub 250 gram drones and are not learning key safety elements at all. Confusion. Drone pilots can study and pass the exams and still have no clear idea about how to identify safe airspace using practical tools. And closely related to this, ignorance. If you pass the exam without specific feedback, you don't really know what you don't know. And to illustrate how prevalent the concern is about the exams, I shared the outcome of our June 2022 DPAC membership survey where 40% of the respondents identified rationalization of the RPAS exams as the number one priority for us to address, despite the fact that the majority of respondents had already passed the exam. Next, we got into the details. And for those who follow my channel, you may recognize the evaluation here, similar to what I presented in my exams throw them out video. The numbers presented here have been adjusted slightly from the video after we held a DPAC review, but the message is the same. We graded each of the exam knowledge requirements and learning objectives on a scale of A to D, with A being pretty good, and D meaning the item was unrelated to safe drone operations. Our analysis showed that well over half the requirements were either C, unnecessary, or D, unrelated to drone safety, both for the basic and advanced exams. And a similar story emerged when examining the learning objectives. Now, rather than just debate abstract numbers, I focused on these 40 learning objectives, graded as unrelated to drone safety, and listed them all out for visibility. There's three pages of these. I highlighted a few really wild ones in yellow such as being able to identify the altimeter setting region and standard pressure region. Or on this page, everyone's favorite hypoxia-related item, describe the symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning. 
and of course, describe the chemical composition of the atmosphere. These learning objectives are unrelated to flying drones. I then went on to say that despite all these knowledge requirements, there are still things that drone pilot candidates should be tested on that don't appear on the exams. We put these into four categories. We felt strongly that drone pilots should need to know how to use online tools or apps to determine safe flight areas instead of VFR charts and how to check for other restrictions, such as municipal bylaws that may prevent flight. In the safe operation of your drone, you should be tested on practical elements of checking your drone for potential safety issues, like swollen batteries, for example. And we thought that required knowledge areas should include privacy issues, since this is such a hot button with the general public. And finally, we added the fact that there is no difference between commercial versus recreational operations, if only to slow down the stream of email questions I receive on this topic. Now, for those of us on the DPAC steering committee, this isn't our first rodeo, and we knew that just presenting a problem isn't going to cut it. We needed to offer a solution, and we did. First, we stated that Transport Canada needs to review and replace their knowledge requirements and learning objectives with ones focused exclusively on relevant subjects. Drone regulations, categories of drone operations, knowing your drone, knowing where you can fly and cannot fly, and privacy. And by the way, we offered to enter into a non-disclosure agreement, or NDA, if they wanted our assistance in this review. Second, we proposed that the exam outcome should include specific feedback on which questions were answered correctly or incorrectly. Now, some of you are probably thinking these are pretty apple pie proposals, but we went one step further, a giant step in fact. Steve Bannister took the lead on this part of the proposal. He reviewed the approach used in the US, UK and Europe and created a Canadian equivalent. We call it the Basic Drone Pilot Certification Program. It's a combined online education and quiz program that starts by introducing the basic information Canadian drone pilots must know, the five areas I mentioned earlier. For each of the areas, the certification program explains the rules and guidelines in easy to read text, followed immediately by a number of related multiple choice questions. Not trick questions, but straight tests to ensure the knowledge has actually sunk in. In order to pass, you need to get all 35 questions correct. But that's not overly tough, because we tell you everything you need to know right up front. Oh, and by the way, we've woven into this the, the rules and restrictions applicable to sub-250 gram drones as well. The intent is that this proposed type of certification program, once productized, would replace the current basic RPAS pilot exam and also provide meaningful safety information for all pilots. And it would be an easy thing for drone retailers to point to when selling drones, perhaps with a QR code to help newbies get started on the right path. Steve created a working prototype that we demonstrated to Jeremy during the meeting, and we provided it to Transport Canada for further review and consideration. It's an amazing tool, just to give you a flavor. Here's an information section, followed by the related questions. At the end, you're provided with specific feedback on your answers and an indication of the correct answer as well. Educational, easy to do, and directly related to best drone practices. And of course, hypoxia. <laughs> Just kidding. There's nothing about hypoxia in our proposal. So that's what we presented and offered. The reaction? Well, very positive overall. Jeremy explained that his TC team had already been reviewing and refreshing exam questions, but their approach was to focus on questions that candidates were having troubles with, the ones people were consistently answering incorrectly. They were not going right back to the knowledge requirements and reviewing their relevance. And Jeremy was intrigued by this approach. He indicated that he would take that idea back to his team 
including our line-by-line -line spreadsheet evaluation, which we shared with them. I actually hold a pretty strong hope that some exam questions will improve fairly soon, but actually removing or changing the underlying knowledge requirements might take longer. This is because the knowledge requirements live in a public document, TP 15263. That said, this document isn't a standard, just a TP, a transport publication. And it even says within it that it may be amended as required. The irrelevant exam questions may take a while to remove, but we're optimistic that changes will come. But what about our rather radical proposal to change the basic exam structure itself? Jeremy liked what he saw and applauded the immense amount of work that obviously went into it. Again, he promised to take the proposal to his team and have a close look at the prototype. He did point out that a fair bit of IT effort would be required to solidify our prototype into a productized tool. And of course, it would need to be available in both French and English. Reasonable comments. And again, we offered to help out in any way we could. We emphasized that despite it appearing to be taking a very different approach to the current exam, this isn't groundbreaking. There are other Transport Canada exams that take a similar learning-centric approach. Jeremy said he would look into that as well. As I said, the meeting was very positive, very constructive, and focused on pragmatic, executable improvements to the exams. Jeremy followed up with a note of appreciation of Deepak's interest and efforts in making the exams as relevant and effective as possible. Our next review with TC will be towards the end of the year. Before I close, I want to encourage you to consider joining DPAC if you haven't already done so. The Drone Pilot Association of Canada represents recreational and light commercial drone operators by promoting safety and a reasonable regulatory environment in Canada. There's a link in the description below this video to our great new website where you can learn more about us, check our learning resources, and join the organization. Membership is totally free. Each and every membership is crucial to ensure we have a strong mandate and a unified voice that Transport Canada will continue to respect. As of the date of this recording, we stand 1,274 members strong. Thanks for watching. Safe and happy flying.